find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by um, the Zoom platform. And anyone can find out how to get the credentials to get on there by checking out the town website or the posted agendas or contacting Julie to get a specific email invitation to the meeting. And um, looks like there's nobody else in the waiting room. And away we go. Does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight? I sent some things in Friday, just a little bit ahead of the, uh, uh, the notice that I got about the meeting. I don't know if the board has seen that yet. Um, questions I, about the, uh, the uh, Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Commission's uh, Regional Energy Committee. Okay. That didn't make it in time to get on the... Uh, original agenda, but we'll um, put it on there right now. Anybody else? Hey, Dune, I had something about um, um, lot lines. Okay. Right. So um, I guess we'll start with the minutes from the last meeting, which I thought covered everything except at the very end at the end when it says we um, adjourn the meeting to go into executive session at 6 45 p.m we failed to communicate to julie that we exited executive session at 7 10 p.m with no action taken so i guess we should add those to the minutes and with that um, um, addition i'd move to accept the minutes as typed yeah, up i second that all in favor all right all right Okay, get that. Cool. Um, that. So, um, Joan, what's up? What do you got for updates? Let's jump right um, in. Just two items. Um, one is with regards to the town garage stormwater project, uh, which we're now hoping to do next year, um, getting it out to bid early in the year, maybe you know by January or February. Question came up. Uh, we had a, an on site visit with Cooter, and one of the things we were looking at was um, the paving. I don't know if you remember, there was a discussion ooh, a few months ago now about the extent of the paving. The grant itself will only pay for a portion of the paving, and uh, Cooter would really like to be able to have the rest of it done, just make sense rather than having kind of a, a bump, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the middle there. So I asked him today um, if he could give me an idea of what it might cost to do the additional amount and um, what it is he'd want to do. So he said it would be two inches of asphalt to match what would be um, installed under the grant. I don't know how many square feet it is, um, but he figures it's going to be, it would be a cost to the town of about $10,000 to do that additional paving. So uh, you don't have to decide right away, but it is something that would be good for you to decide if that's something you want to include in the highway budget for this coming year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, um, we've been putting off several little problem spots around town. So maybe this is the year that we can attack. Do, do all of it. But yeah. Okay. No. Um, so then the other item is just an FYI. Um, I think it was last week I sent you a VTrans announcement that I received uh, that we will be receiving. It was part of a larger um, uh, paragraph that discussed the fact that we're confirming what we already knew, which is they aren't going to be doing the structures grant and the class two roadway grants uh, this coming fiscal year. But uh, part of that was also, which I missed the first time when I read it, when I read it a second time, I realized um, there's a little bit of positive information in there also, which is to offset 
offset the fact that they're pausing these grant programs, they're gonna be increasing the amount of money they give us through the supplemental highway funds that we get every year. Um, they said that they had, uh, Julie, do you remember, was it $7 million available to distribute? Seven, yes. Yeah, okay, so, and so, I uh, was wondering, do you, do you know when we actually get that money? Because uh, I'm very curious to see how much additional we're, we'll be getting this year. I don't know offhand, but I've heard through chatter that um, some towns are already receiving. So okay. it's just a matter, we'll have to look it up. Yeah. All right. Well, let's be on the lookout for it. And then I'll be very interested to see uh, how much additional we have. And then you can decide how you want to deal with that within the highway budget, whether you want to try and or if it's even enough, or just know, you know, put it aside for a rainy day. Yeah. All right, well, that's good news. That's all I have. Yeah, that'd be helpful to know as we um, move into the budget season. Right, OK. You know what's going on with that. All right, thank you, Joan. Yeah. Um, I don't see anybody from the Library <laughs> Highway. So um, Jeff, get part. Let's talk about the um, what you had to report from Two Rivers on the energy. Still there? I think he has to unmute. You're on mute, Jeff. Maybe I can do it. Uh, I got it. You got it. Okay. I must have double clicked and put it right back on. Yep. yep. <laughs> Uh, I spoke with Jeff Martin. Um, actually, I sent an email to each board member and to Julie. Um, I'd spoken with Jeff Morton at two, uh, Martin at Two Rivers Ottaquichi on Friday. Um, everybody signed the regional committee, energy committee uh, document that's going to. There are going to only be three towns on the committee, uh, Rochester, Hancock, and Pittsfield. The question that came up is that the agreement between the towns and Two Rivers Ottaquichi calls for each town to identify a primary participant and an alternate. So in that regard, I had the questions, is a, a member of the select board planning to participate as a primary town representative for the committee, um, or do you want me to fulfill that role? Um, I think that um, it'd be great if you would be willing to fulfill that role in your role as our energy coordinator. And then it would make sense then to perhaps one of the select board to be the, the secondary. Exactly. Very good. Happy to do it that way. Uh, okay. I would like to have the second name uh, available uh, for the invites to the first meeting, which is he's thinking November 18th. Who's got the energy for energy meeting? <laughs> I guess I can do it. Yeah. So yeah. excuse me. Um, Jeff is the town energy coordinator. Am I correct? I'm sorry. I thought I heard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt. Well, thank you, Frank. You, you're um, familiar with energy. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will. I'll I'm notify Jeff Martin. I'll notify Jeff Martin that you're the alternate, Frank, and get him some contact info. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that, Jeff. Um, I also, um, just as an FYI, um, I saw a notice uh, from the uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development. Uh, they have a climate catalyst program. I guess it's in its second year. And uh, what they do with this is that uh, it's a juried acceptance. Um, I applied for it. It uh, goes over a whole year. And what they do is they try to help uh, climate uh, change projects, um, you know, mitigating climate change. Uh, they try to help folks become better leaders and present things. And, and uh, I thought, geez, this is great. This is a free thing. Um, I can utilize that and, and tap into the brains of people that have been on energy committees and uh, you know people at the state government level as well. So I'm going to utilize um, 
the energy you know, coordinator position and working up a full plan for the board's consideration, um, all the options, all the benefits, savings, costs, all of that kind of thing, um, utilizing this process. Now, I hope to have some idea of uh, some, at least some preliminary budget numbers for folks uh, soon so that you can get going on the budgeting process. That's, that's it. Great, thank you. And I will have more time next year um, after I'm officially retired. It's a little bit of a juggle right now, and uh, I don't expect uh, I expect the tiny violin from you guys on the select board. <laughs> I've seen how hard you work, right? So right. I only deserve a tiny violin right now. Right. Well, thank you for the uh, tiny violin. Every bit <laughs> helps. Yeah. Um, Dan, you uh, wanted to talk about having a, a clarifying. Um, statement or something that we can give people that have um, questions about lot line modifications like what Rob has been dealing with lately. You're muted. We had a second inquiry to the Planning Commission about a um, apparent uh, lot line mistake. Um, Steve Lewis, I think his name is out on uh, State Garage Road. Yep, Steve Lewis um, had uh, has 0.7 acres, and his next door neighbor, um, which I think is a family member, his cousin, owns 0.4 acres. But Steve's being taxed for 1.1 for both of those lots, um, and he came to the Planning Commission via email to me saying, um, "Can you fix this for me?" And I sent them to Rob Gardner. No, just kidding, Rob. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering if this is going to be a, a, something that's going to happen. So this is you know, twice in the past um, you know, six weeks or so that we've um, had this happen. Um, if they're just to understand what the process is when someone has that kind of concern or dispute, where do they go? Um, who's going to be responsive to them? Um, is, is there a formal process for that? And could we potentially write it up so that they um, know where to go and they don't get the runaround from me or, or, or yeah. someone else? Yeah. So this is, um, sounds like another situation like Excuse Rob me. encountered where the new tax mapping made some assumptions and, and um, it's not like someone is intentionally wanting to change their lot line so much as they're all of a sudden um, there's been a, a, a change or a mistake made in how the lots are allotted. Um, so um, in, in Rob's case, it seemed um, to me that the, the simplest way of doing that was when we um, redo the tax maps again next year to bring that situation to the attention of whoever we get to be doing the maps to at that point clarify the mistake that was made. I don't think that there needs to be, a, it's not like they're legally changing anything because what the tax map is showing is actually contrary to what the, the legal deeds are saying. And I, I guess in, um, in Steve Lewis's situation, does it sound like it, that's the same deal they had he and his, his brother had two separate lots and um, I don't know. Rob, you had something you want to say? Yeah, actually, Char, Char was waving at me. Oh, uh, oh okay. Sorry. But no, she had a good question, which was uh, if you're in a situation like this, like we've been taxed now for this plan, uh, should we be, it, should there be a process when we re repair this to try to get the money back? I have no idea how much money it is, but should that, as long as you're thinking about a policy or mechanism to deal with this, uh, it's quite possible if somebody had a thing like this, they ended up paying their taxes like I did. So I, I, I think I'm not asking for an answer. I just think mm -hmm. that's something that should be in the mix. I, I'd also uh, kind of respectively, respectfully suggest in this process, dealing with the listers is, is, is in this issue is dysfunctional in my view. And so if you're thinking about a process, if there's only two people, it's, it's hardly a house on fire. But if other people in the town as things go through, uh, if this appears, you might want to look 
at, at the totality of the process by which somebody goes through this process to put their land back together. That's all I had to say. Right, and then there are the other situations where someone intentionally wants to adjust their lot line with the agreement with a neighbor for whatever reason that that needs to happen just to clarify something or, or you know get another parking space or what have you and that that's a pretty um clearly defined process where you have to get uh, um permission from any mortgage holders on the property and then the a lawyer would modify the, the respective deeds to reflect that that agreement and i think that's something if it's a, a just a small area, I don't know what the, the cutoff is for what's considered a small area, but very you know, you know, less than a third of an acre or something. But, um, Does uh, Two Rivers have any policies on that? Have they had any experience with that, Dan? Do you know? I do not know. I haven't um, reached out to them how how to handle that. I, I would try reaching out to them and see what if they have a uh, the similar situations. I can't believe we're the only town that goes through this in a tax map situation. Right. So they may have a something that they've worked with. Pat, you had something you want to say? No, I do. Um, listen, it goes by the uh, you got to pull your deed. And everyone is responsible for knowing what they've been deeded for property when they bought it. And it is your responsibility to keep an eye on things to make sure that numbers don't uh, change from where your deed is. So you're always supposed to follow your deed. Um, I would say that the, the listers are still part of this procedure, although uh, once they set the grand list, they really can't make many changes until the following April. So that may be why it seems as though the listers are not being responsive. They have lodged their grand list and we have based our tax rate on it. And, and that's not supposed to change at this time of year. Um, so that's probably pending for the change when it comes to its next cycle, which starts April 1st. Um, so what the listers will do is they'll pull the deeds for both properties and uh, try to determine, you know, where the line should be and are you being taxed according to what your deed is on your property. So it, it, most times it, it really does kind of start and end with the listers. Um, and, and that said, um, you know, it shouldn't be a zoning thing unless it's like what Doom said that two, two owners want to move the line. <coughs> goes through zoning and legal and all of that. But if it's just a correction to the tax map and they're being billed incorrectly and their deed says something different, I believe that the listers just make that change the following April, the following year. Well, uh, they didn't, they, they just failed to respond to me. So whether if they're going to make the change, they never told me, nor did they follow up in the conversation with a map guy. And then when I tried to appeal it, they turned me down. So I'm just saying that's a, when, when you consider that this is a, an odd, it's an odd issue with the weird missing deed and everything. But um, in my sense that there was a, a legitimate problem. I have a correct deed. The old tax map show my deed is correct. I didn't have any mechanism by which to talk to anybody about this. I was just basically shut out and I had to go do a bunch of work with Julie at the town office. Okay, so have you I don't want to get into a rant part? about that. I just think it ought to be considered as part of the process. Have you pulled your list card to see if your list card and bill on the I didn't quite understand that, Pat. You're breaking up. Well, I'll, I'll talk to Rob later about it. Okay. It's not an emergency or anything. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not setting the house on fire. But okay. I just, if you're going to lay down a policy, that you ought to think about that, too. That's all. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so you're telling, let me see if I understand. If you want me to respond to him, is that um, if he has a dispute. He has to pay taxes on more land than he, is, he has in his deed. And then in April, he can um, talk to a lister or file a grievance. Um, and then they can make the, look in the, look in the records and make the adjustment. But they cannot make the adjustment uh, midstream, in the middle of the year, because they've set the grand list. 
And th this time there's no recourse for getting the money back that we paid in extra taxes. Not, not um, clearly. I suppose you could um, you could work out a deal with the the neighbors <laughs> that were supposed to pay the taxes and give them fifty bucks or whatever. That would be one way of um, of, of doing that. But it's I think that the main thing is to get it clarified. So going further, I think we calculated on years, Rob, yeah. not a big amount of money, like under a hundred dollars, I think. But still, um, still, it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> It's not a big deal. It's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Um, I would just like to request whoever just um, came in at 802-229-8154. There seems to be a lot of static coming from your line. So if you could mute until you have something to say, that would help. Because I don't know if everyone else is hearing it, but your, um, your, little, um, your little box is highlighted as if you're talking because of the static. I don't know if you heard that or not. but. Um, Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'll respond to um, Steve Lewis. Um, I'd like to um, CC someone on the select board. Um, who would like yeah. to? If you want to CC me, I'd be happy because I've kind of been digging into this a little yeah. bit. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Yep. Yep. Um, All right. Um, no one's here from the highway, but I, I think they um, they're um, getting close to spreading sand. Um, there was a little bit of snow in um, underneath my valley in, in my yard this morning in town. I don't know what it was like up high. But, um, the um, in terms of new business, the school absentee ballot. The um, the second I have someone I think that wants to. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You want you want me to um forward that on to you? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, but um, I will send you the proper information. What's um? Do I have your email? Just a second. Bear with me, all. There's someone that's having trouble getting in. I uh, do. I think I'm. I just sent it to him. To he Robert. Sent, he sent me an email. I just sent it to him. Okay. Yeah. Pat Harvey just sent that to you. You got it. All right. There you go. Is that where all the static is coming from? Because I'm hearing a lot. Yeah. Well, then all right, I mean, we'll, uh, the, uh... yep, yep, I'm looking for you. Um... No, no, it's a busy time, but it's, um, you should be able to, you can go to the website, you know, and find it yourself. It's a lot easier, but I'll see you on the, on the Zoom meeting. Um, okay. Um, so we have, um, we're talking about the absentee ballots for the school. What's the, what's going on with that, Julie? I just wanted to announce that if anybody would like to request a, uh, absentee ballot, they're more than happy to, you know, they can call me at the office and I can either mail it or they can pick it up. But I just wanted to get that out there since, um, we haven't had a lot of, a lot of people picking them up because all the absentee ballots were mailed out by the state. So. Um, Julie, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. um, I got one because um, um, oh God, <coughs> your, uh, your assistant, oh gosh, why can't I think of her name for a minute? Kristen? Kristen, hello, excuse me. Kristen asked me if I wanted her to send me one and she did mail me one. I didn't even know about it, I guess, beforehand. So were they, they weren't mailed out in general? Is that it or? No, they weren't mailed out there. It's, uh, they've asked that people request them. Oh, okay. That's why I wanted to make the announcement. All right. Uh, uh, and it's it, it's for a, a, a spot on the RSUD board, right? Right, it's, it's for a direct spot. And when is that, when is that vote? It's the same day as the election on okay. the 3rd. 
second, third, third. And that's for the absentee ballots. If someone shows up in person, they'll have access to those ballots at the um, at the um, polling place, correct? That, that's correct. Right, okay. All right. Cool. Um, that is pretty much what we have on the agenda for tonight. Um, well, I have one quick question yeah. my, for myself. Um, I'm having um, a lot of medical issues that are making my walking bad. So I ended up, I'm going to have to have a handicap access ramp put on front of my house. Right. And, um, um, oh gosh, sorry, my brain is just so far. So tired lately because I don't get much sleep. Anyway, David Curtis and uh, uh, Dean Mandel are going to build it and start next week, I believe. And they ap applied at the town office for a, a, a grant. I'm not a grant, a building permit, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I permit. approved that building permit last week. Okay, thank you. The reason I'm, I'm asking is because someone said to me that they thought maybe the ramp was going to be, because I don't have a big front yard, was going to be too close to the road and it was I would get in trouble for that. But if you approved it, it probably no. Wouldn't. It was within the setback for that. Okay, no, thank you. I, I threw that up. It was within the setback. I wasn't sure if it had been approved or not, and I just wanted to check and make sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right. Um, so, um, if, unless there's anything else anyone would like to talk about, I've got another question, even if I may. Yeah. Uh, I respond to Mr. Lewis. Uh, who should I put him in touch with, or who should he contact in April when the listeners are um, revisiting the grand list? He should, yeah, I guess we need to. Um, well, it would be a now uh, the second person on a list of. Um, I would think that when we get the new mapper, that that when we present them with the project, we'll also highlight these as two problem areas that need to be um, have attention paid to them. That... Hi, this is Robert. What? Um, did that answer your question? So, so between now and April, someone will be tracking it for Mr. Lewis or to see to call someone and put it on their radar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um I I'm I'm kind of got that on my, my on my desktop here that that um something to you know yeah, great. to deal with <laughs> when we have the the new um tax mapping. All right. Yeah. All right. And I suppose that wouldn't hurt to bring it up and make sure it's on the listers, but I think the more people paying attention to it, the better. Pat? Are people are people finding these things because it's now online, so you can go online and see the tax maps. I mean, some of these may have been problems right along, but we just switched from paper to digital, so maybe that's where all this is coming from. Huh? I don't know if it's that so much as I think when we had the um, the new tax maps done with the other company that was more professional, shall we say, that they. Um, I think he made some assumptions without digging deeply enough and and he um and made some mistakes. It sounds like that's what happened. And so so dude, now, I, have, I have a couple of it's Robert. I have a couple of things to add to the uh, agenda. One um, you're, you were okay. Um we were um pretty much at the end of the agenda, but uh, can you wait till we finish? Well, uh, the, reason, the, the reason I'm late for the agenda is because the Julie, the town clerk, sent me the invite and the passwords for this meeting, which was dated back in September. So it took me an hour to get through to figure out what was going on. So I would think you, would, you should have a talk with Julie to make certain that democracy and sending out information where we would be joined in a public way is properly zoomed or emailed to people so she sent me a an invite and a password to a september meeting so i'm delayed so now you're calling me out for the agenda being here's the um, deal uh, okay just 
just um calm down there, Robert. And it's um no, I, it's not. It's not. It's not. I, I'm just aggravated that the town clerk doesn't have the responsibility or didn't have the responsibility to send me tonight's password and a Zoom meeting. You know, there's there's so, been two weeks since the last meeting, and it's not that hard to do your own research and find it Doom, on the website Doom, or Doom, on the town Doom. office. Go on to your website tonight and see if you can find the code for tonight's select board meeting. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. So I have a question for everyone. What's, the, what's your question? I have a question and I have two requests. The question is, was Joanne McDonald fired from the town of Rochester? After no, she wasn't. Robert, you know what? We, we talked about this two meetings ago ad nauseum. It's getting old. This is old history. She quit. She was not fired. I think you got that information before. What's your next question? No, it's a request, dude. Well, question, request, what is it? The request is the written rules by the Civil Board of Authority of Rochester for Election Day. Where are the minutes of the Civil Board of Authority to lock down the rules of Election Day that not you, the select board, but the civil board of authority should have in the presence and in the hands of people that are going to vote. Where are the minutes? I don't quite understand your question, Robert. You're asking about the the um, process by which the voting will be performed this year? No, I'm asking about the process of the people that put forth the rules to put forth on November 3rd. I don't think- I, I think you go back in the select board meeting minutes where we we discussed this pretty um, thoroughly. Um, do, do yeah. I, I need to interrupt. I spent an hour with Will Senning from the Secretary of State's office today and the select board of any town in the state of Vermont does not have the jurisdiction to create and enforce rules for election day. The board- That's that's the, that is actually the town clerk's responsibility. <laughs> no, it is not. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. It, the town clerk has jurisdiction on election day, on election day from 12 a.m. till November 3rd, till midnight. Every rule that's written before that is null and void. There are no rules. What rules? It's yeah. the Secretary of State. No, Julie read the rules last, the last meeting I was in, and she told everyone what the rules are at the high school. Okay. So, as, let, as it was right, the right. Secretary of State. That no. is the time when she is in, 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 that's her jurisdiction, she's running that election. Oh, so, Right now, there's a rule in Rochester that says you have to hold it, you have to be present. A human being, being has to be present holding a sign in front of the school. You cannot post a sign, you cannot do anything. Now, that rule is, do you understand what I'm trying to get here? Not so, really, no. No, I, I, I don't really. You're um, he's talking no, about. No. Oh, sorry. Dude. Your, your, the rules that have been set forth, Julie, Julie should re read the rules that she put forth in the last meeting we talked about this. Those rules are null and void because they didn't go through the Civil Board of Authority in Rochester. Do you not get that? Every rule till, till, till the day of election voted and secured supposedly by the select board of Rochester is null and void, confirmed by the uh, Secretary of State's office today. They're void. So I could put a sign in the lawn down at the school, legally distanced from the entrance, and go away. Yeah. He's just an asshole. Hey. So, um, so Robert, you're... um. What's your point? What are you trying to? What are you trying to get here? You're trying to get your ability to do something different than what the 
this the town clerk and the select board have decided are the appropriate ways to go i mean you mentioned you, you mentioned the select board and the town clerk there's the board of civil authority which includes oh, you patty frank and two justices of the peace that was confirmed today by will Senning. so i have to do is will said to to me robert put this forth to the select board tonight if you have a select board meeting as you're doing now, invite two justices of the peace and say, folks, we're going to switch from a select board to the Board of Civil Authority, Patty, Frank, and Doom, two justices of the peace, present the rules for election day, and they're good. It's gold. It's a done deal. But I don't understand why the town of Rochester doesn't understand the, the, the responsibility of the, the Civil Board of Authority. Robert, if this was a, a real legitimate concern and complaint, I'm not dissing your concern, it's obvious, but don't you think that bringing it to our attention um, before the meeting, maybe even a couple of days before or a week before the meeting and not halfway through and at the end of the meeting, that, that if you wanted some action, that that would be the logical way to go about um, um, requesting. Oh, uh, I, 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 I need to interrupt. I yeah. sent you an email saying that the select board has no authority for the rules for election day, and you ignored my email. I'll share it with everyone on this video tonight on Zoom. I'll send the, I'll copy and forward the email I sent to you, Doom, that said the select board of Rochester or any town or village in Vermont does not have jurisdiction over election day rules. You ignored me, dude. I understand. I understand. That was two weeks ago. So now you're accusing was, me of of not addressing this in a in a in a, in a more advanced way. This is a well. I would recommend hey, Robert. We um thank you for your concern and bringing this to our attention. I'm I um I guess am I to expect a, a phone call from the Secretary of State that we're breaking the rules and and we should um postpone the election what are you asking here i would suggest that martha slater june patty and frank have a conversation a conference call with will Senning at the secretary of state's office so he can actually define what i'm trying to communicate to the town of rochester so all right call, call, thank you thank you robert is that is that all that you had on your you, that you want to talk about tonight? Uh, I think I've already spent enough time, but the, yes. the, the, the oh, so I have. Oh, well, um, I was agreeing with you. Well, what I, I would suggest, made, I think you've you've made your point. What is my point, Do Put it back to the me. The point is that you do not agree with the action that's taken by the Rochester Select Board or town clerk exactly because right. there's a, a there's a position between the select board and the town clerk it's called the civil board of authority okay thank you you said uh, is that the um you said you had two things you were concerned about that was the second one is that correct well, I, one of the other requests was for Julie to reread the rules that the select board submitted in the last conversation that we had and put them public. You know what? They're, they're on Orca Media. You can go back to the past meeting and, and, and hear those read again. So if, Julie, you want, if you want to see that again, I so, don't think, is there anyone else on the meeting here that uh, wants to hear those again or do we want to give the date when they can go back and find them because I'm finding this to be a little bit um, um, what's the word um, it's getting it's getting a little old Robert you're asking for the same things over and over again and, and the information that you're asking for is out there on the record 
And I don't think we need to have Julie read those again, unless Julie, do you feel like reading those again? I mean, it shouldn't take too long. I think the decision should be up to Julie, not you. Yeah, because she's the one in charge of the polling place. So Julie, she's you in have charge of the polling place the day of election, not yes. the yes. election. Um, so let's hear Julie read the Robert, words. Robert, why don't you come in and I'll give you a copy of them. I think everyone present should hear the rules that have been written by the select board and supported by you, written Julie. by Julie, actually. I have already heard the rules. They were read at another meeting and they were published in the Herald. There's, you yeah. know, a number it's of old news, Robert. Yeah. I mean, the, the election is, is coming up and it's pretty clear what the process is going to be and, and, um, you know, I you seem to be the only one that has a, a question or a problem with that, and it's um, and and I think you know how to, to find the that on uh, if Julie, if you want to give Robert a copy of them so he can and have them in paper, that's that's fine, but I don't, I, I would suggest that Julie send those to the Secretary of State's office and get confirmation that they are proper rules under the select board, and will sending. Jim Condos will say they're null and void because the board is the civil board of authority of Rochester didn't approve them. Okay. Um, thank you. I think that's uh, you've made your point, and we'll um, we'll um, work to improve upon that. June, all I'm asking is we know what you're asking, Robert. You've asked it over and over. It's um, it's 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 okay. You know, it, it's you've made your point again, and um, we'd like to move on here. We're just about. I guess we were asked at the point of asking if anyone else had something that they wanted to contribute to the conversation, and we understand what you're saying, Robert. Um, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to talk about? Good. Um, thank you, Robert. You can go in and get a copy from Julie if you want to see that in print instead of um, on Orca. And we'll um, and we'll. Uh, I, June, uh, June, I already have a copy of it. Oh, okay. 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 I would suggest to Julie that she just sends it up to Will Sunny because he's he's been concerned about the town of Rochester for a long, long time. Okay. It's funny. I have not heard anything from him, but. Um, I guess um, we'll leave that to you to share with us. Um, so um, the next meeting is going to be Monday, November 9th. It'll be interesting to see what um, what transpires between now and then. It should be um, an exciting week or two. So um, we'll see um, some of you at the um, at the polls, and I guess a lot of you have already sent your ballots in. And so um, thank you all for being here. And we'll, um, that's it for tonight, except for we are um, moving into an executive session to continue a conversation about employee issues. So, uh, well, good night, everyone. Thank you, Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.